In this video, we will take up the cervical vertebrae. That means we are now starting with the regions of the vertebral column. We have seen a typical vertebra structure. So, cervical region or cervical vertebrae. That means we are talking about the vertebrae which are in the neck region. And these vertebrae, they are seven in number. So there are seven vertebrae in mammals. Out of these seven, first, second, or let me write it like this. The first, second, and the seventh, they are a typical vertebrae. That means they show some variation from a typical vertebra. Whereas third to seven, sorry, third to sixth, they are typical vertebrae. So what exactly is meant by this typical vertebral structure we have seen? So most of the vertebrae that is third to sixth, everything is similar to typical with a minor uh, change that we will take up a little later. But first, second and the seventh one are different from the typical vertebrae. We will start with the first cervical vertebra. First cervical vertebra. And this vertebra is known as atlas. It has been given the name atlas. After we understand the structure, we will also be able to correlate with this toe. Why this name has been given to the vertebra. Few important things about the cervical vertebra. One, it is a ring-like structure. Neural spine and centrum are absent. Neural spine and centrum. Centrum which is on the ventral side, neural spine which is on the dorsal side are absent. Transverse processes are present but they are reduced. So reduced transverse processes. Pre and post zygapophysis are also absent. So pre and post, pre and post zygapophysis absent. These are the articulating structures to which the upper and the lower vertebrae articulate with. Because this is the first one, there is no vertebra above it, so no need of pre zygapophysis Below it is the second vertebra, that is the second uh, uh, cervical vertebra, which is known as axis. It also has a different structure. So there is no need of articulation with the first and the second or of the first vertebra. And that is why pre and post zygapophysis are absent. Now when all these structures are different, then how does this atlas look? If we again go by the same method, it has this neural spine. This is the cavity through which the spinal cord is going to run. This is the place from where the brain stem continues with the spinal cord. And this is the ventral side. This is dorsal side. On the ventral side, there is no centrum. Instead, there is one more canal. And this canal is known as the odontoid foramen. So this, this one is the neural canal through which spinal cord passes through. And this is the odontoid canal in which the odontoid process is going to fit in. We'll take that up in a minute. The transverse processes are reduced but are present. So here these are the transverse processes. Neural spine is not there. So we just have this arch which is present. So it looks like a ring-like structure. Now what we have to imagine when we are talking of uh, the first vertebra, this is the first one. And if you're seeing it from this side, that is upper side, here the skull is going to be. The skull, if you're able to remember, the last bone here is the occipital bone. An occipital bone 
at the bottom part has these two kind of depressions and they are known as occipital condyles. So if this is atlas and this structure, bulging structure has to fit into this uh, atlas. So atlas has two depressions. So we draw those depressions here. These are those depressions which we are showing and they are known as facets for occipital condyle. So there is a depression here. Let me label it. It is facet for occipital condyle. So if we have shown occipital condyles like this, atlas would have these kind of depressions on its upper surface so that this occipital condyle fits onto that depression. So imagine this is occipital condyle and here is the curvature. So it is going to fit here. Now when skull fits on atlas, then the movement takes place. This, this is the depression and here is the occipital condyle. And when we move our head in yes position or nodding position, this is what is the movement taking place or we can show it like this. So that is why atlas is also known as yes bone because when occipital condyles fit onto it, then it is able to show this kind of movement. So when we say yes, the head is or the skull is moving like this, going back again like this. So this is also known as yes bone because it is responsible for this kind of movement of the head. Odontoid process, it is a structure in axis. So it is a structure which is bulging out. It's a peg-like structure. And if this structure is coming out from the vertebra, imagine this is, say, this is axis and this is the structure which is coming out. So atlas has to have a socket so that this structure fits onto that. So here would this structure fit in and that is why we are calling it a canal. So odontoid canal is meant for odontoid process, which is an extension of the second cervical vertebra that is axis. Neural spine is not there. Let me label this. This is the transverse process. This we have already labeled. This is odontoid uh, canal. And this part, which is the bony part, is known as the neural arch. Here also it is neural arch. And these are the two facets for occipital codons. No neural spine, no pre and post zygapophysis. Now, why this name? We have seen atlas and whenever we talk of atlas, there is a picture of a man who is holding the entire earth on his shoulders. So this is the bone which is holding the entire skull on itself. And that is why the name atlas has been given to this bone. And this is the first cervical vertebra. And as we have drawn the structure, you can understand why it is different from the normal typical vertebra. There is no neural spine, there is no centrum, no pre and post zygapophysis. Transverse processes are there, but they are reduced, not very long structures. So we call such a bone or such a vertebra as an atypical vertebra. It's not showing the typical uh, characters. And because all these extensions are either reduced or absent, it looks like a ring structure. So we call this atlas as a ring-like vertebra. The name which has been given to it is yes bone. And the reason is that the head, when it fits on the atlas, the atlas has these depressions which are occipital, uh, facets for occipital condyle and the occipital condyles of the skull fit here. And this movement takes place. So we are able to say yes or which is called the nodding part. So the name given to it. Atlas because it is holding the weight of the entire skull on itself and no extensions on every side. Transverse processes reduced. This is the first cervical vertebra. The second vertebra which is again atypical is known as axis. So in the next part we will talk about axis vertebra.